3D printed rockets, can you make them? Can you do everything with your 3D printer? Stick around because we're going to get into Mission Control Part 2 of our 3D printed rocket project. Hey, welcome back to the First Layer. My name is Richard. I'm your host here every Wednesday and live stream Saturday night. On Saturday nights, we do a show called Ask for Help, where we take your questions and we answer them live on air from 7 till 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time every Saturday night. Let's dive into what we got going on today. And we are into part two of our 3D printed rocket project. As you can see in front of me, we've got lots of stuff. Over on this side, we have commercial rockets. This is the um, Bullpup rocket, which uh, was sent to us by a fan. And uh, I want to thank that fan for that. And uh, we now are going to finish this up. It's going to get painted up. This is an actual replica of a U.S. missile, which is kind of cool. So we are going to finish painting this up, decal it up. Of course, this is the rocket that we got, the Alpha 3, uh, with the launcher and the uh, launch controller. Now, this launch controller takes eight uh, AA batteries, I believe, six to eight AA batteries. And uh, how you use this controller, it's actually kind of neat. It's very simplistic. You take the key, you put the key into it, hold down the key, and then hold down the button. There's no batteries in this right now, but uh, we are going to use it on flight day. Now, I decided this was a little too simple, so I wanted to, let's uh, go to another camera here. I wanna show you this a little bit closer up. So here's that launcher. Um, it's Like I said, it's very simplistic. It's got a wire that comes out. Take two screws out of the back. You throw in your AA batteries. You put the little uh, continuity key in uh, into the hole it will when you push down on it it will make the light come on and all you will do is just hit that button right there and of course you will set off your rocket provided you've got the clips hooked up properly now what i've done is something a little bit different i decided that was too simple i wanted to do something a little bit more involved so of course i did and here's what we came up with uh, this is based on a design I found on uh, online. Uh, there wasn't a lot of notes for it, so I decided that I would uh, uh, take a look and see if I couldn't figure it out and put it together. Now, it's very simple wiring on the inside. I'm not going to open it up and show you. Right now, it's using a 9-volt battery, but we've kind of put in a few extra safety measures. So, first of all, you have to turn the key to activate. Now, that's a pretty bright light. Um, and you can see right now we're at 8.8 .8 zero volts um that right there is indicating how much battery power we have we have a nine volt battery in here which should be more than sufficient to set off the rockets that we're going to be setting off now this light right here is our continuity light and what we need to do for our continuity uh just to make sure that we have continuity we're just going to take the two alligator clips and we're just going to put them together and you see once we do we get that continuity lights light up. So that tells us that we've got a nice clean circuit to our uh, Estes uh, rocket uh, igniter. Now, once you've got continuity, you're going to flip up the switch that says arm. You're going to turn the switch on. What that's going to do is it's going to show you that you're armed and that uh, your fire button is ready to go. Once you are there, you can also see that the voltage drops a little bit. I don't have a fresh 9 volt in here, so um, this whole system, the way that it is, it is draining that battery a little bit. And then you will hit the fire button. Now, we're not going to hit the fire button today because, of course, we've got uh, these clips just put together. But if we unclip them, you'll notice that that continuity light goes out. So it's very simple. This whole case was 3D printed. Um, I designed it in Fusion 360. Now, it wasn't that difficult to do. Um, basically, it was making a box, and I followed a couple of tutorials, uh, and that was it. Once you fired your rocket, you close down the fire key, so that's kind of a safety, and you always want to turn it off so that you've got no power going out to your leads that connect to your igniters, okay? Um, 
now the reason I did it this way and I didn't go all fancy and and do an Arduino project um, partially because of time and secondly I just thought this would be a cool first project and that most people most families can put this together I'm gonna put the STLs uh, for this rocket launcher box up on uh, Thingiverse and uh, you'll find a, a link to that down in the description below. It'll also be on our, our website, thefirstlayer.com. You'll be able to download it there as well. Um, these files are free, so you don't have to pay for them. Again, I just decided to 3D print it. I'm using um, uh, the Overture Gray and the Overture Black um, PLA for this. The Overture Gray and the Overture Black just are great um, little uh plas i mean they just look amazing and uh, i want to thank filaments.ca for those uh filaments as well now we put a fair amount of wire on this we put about 30 feet of wire on it so we can stand away from the rocket now according to um <clears throat> regulations they say that you should be at least uh, 20 feet away for the size of engines that we're using. We're only using A's to C's uh, to launch our rockets. We're not using anything really big. Um, we can go as high as D, I believe, in some of these rockets, but we're not going to bother. Now let's take a look at some of the rockets that we have here. Let's uh, have a quick look at some of the rockets that we've already done. Um, you'll notice that one is not completely a 3d printed rocket and i'll talk about that in a minute but first and foremost let's talk about these two rockets these i found on thingiverse these are printed this one is printed in tough pla eco tough pla from filaments.ca this one is printed in petg now this one's a little tight i just put some primer on them i do have to sand this down if your nose cone is too tight you want to make sure that you sand it down a little bit so it's not quite as tight um, now these are really kind of cool because where the person that designed these and I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can find these um, Design them so that they've got the engine mount already built into it. So you don't have to do any work Also, the uh, launch lug is also built into it. So what you do is you turn the little end cap here And we'll just move to another camera so you can see that closer. So you've got the little end cap And you're just going to turn it and pull it out you're going to take your rocket engine you're going to slide it in and then all you're going to do is match up those and lock that engine in there so now you can see that the engine's locked in it's not going to come out uh, when your rocket takes off now i am a little bit worried about these rings i just want to make sure that these rings don't um melt on me if they do well then it's kind of a Successful failed experiment, I guess um, but Other than that, uh, they are a great little setup. I really like them. We're gonna see how well it flies Of course, we still need to add uh, parachutes and and uh, Cords to these shock cords to them. So um, you can see that this one has a built-in parachute bottom or uh, an area that you can connect your parachute and your uh, shock cord to and then they just fit back together and that is it now we've also 3d printed the stand and i'm going to show you that here so the launch stand that we have is fully 3d printed with the exception of course of our launch rod and our blast shield um, we 3d printed the base the legs themselves are made from black petg the base of the uh, unit is made from black abs uh, just using up what i had around the house and I wanted to use tougher materials for the base. The one thing I did find is that these legs can slip out. So we're going to have to probably put some tape or some padding in there just to tighten them up a little bit. Uh, but that shouldn't be much of a problem. Now, the other thing that I did was I printed out this little box. And I'll go back to a close-up of this. Here we have a basically an engine box. It's like this. I found, again, this is one of those things that I found on Thingiverse, just like the rocket stand. And like two of the rockets basically you put your engines in the bottom and these are for 18 millimeter engines then in the top section you have a place to hold all of your wadding and your igniters nope 
In the top section, you have a place to hold all of your wadding and your igniters. Just toss that back in there. Close it up. And stack. So now we've got a nice place to keep all of our igniters, all of our wadding, and everything is right there. We can take it to the launch field and away we go. Now again, this is made from PLA. It's got about a 30% infill. I wanted it to be tough. Um, this is done with the uh, first layer purple from Spool 3D, so you can check that out. We'll leave a link to that. Now, let's talk about my other rocket. All right, let's talk about this guy. Now, you can see that we are using a traditional cardboard tube for our body. Um, but where it differs is in this nozzle piece here, the fins and the nose cone. Now, right now, this has got a center of gravity of about there. So, um, of course, we're going to have to put some more weight in the nose. Uh, we do have some more fins that are going up on the front of this, much like the bullpup that we have over here. Uh, the nose cone itself is made from uh, ABS, black ABS plastic. And the fins and the rocket tube, I probably should have made those out of ABS as well, uh, but I made them out of PLA, uh, gray over, overture PLA. And uh, these were epoxyed on. I still have to do the fillets on them. But, uh, and then add, of course, the launch lug and the top fins. But let's get a closer look at those fins. So here you can see the fins. All they've got is some um, red filler on them as just to get rid of the layer lines. Um, we are going to sand them a little bit more because I got a little sloppy with my uh, epoxy when I was putting them on. Uh, but the reason that these, I don't know if these fins are going to work because they are really thin. Now, this rocket that I have here, this is based on um, the Jericho missile from Iron Man 1. Uh, the fins themselves pretty much match. Uh, again, I designed these in Fusion 360 as well as the bottom cap and the nose cone. We're all designed in Fusion 360, and I will have links to all those STLs available. Um, there is a space for the shock cord and the uh, parachute to attach to the nose cone. Um, we are going to have to, of course, do something on the inside of that tube uh, to attach the shock cord as well. But once this goes together, uh, we are going to test it out. You guys are going to get to see this thing either fly, crash, and burn, or um, really <laughs> have an interesting time with it. Uh, I think that this rocket may fly. I'm not quite sure. It's the fins that I'm really worried about because they are quite small. Um, they're not nearly as wide as even the ones on this little guy right here. Uh, but we'll see what happens. We'll, uh, you know, that's part of experimentation. So this is what I, I will refer to as a composite rocket. It has uh, some 3D printed parts. It has some traditional parts. But we're going to try and fly this anyway and see how it works. Now, all the STLs uh, for all the stuff that I've created, uh, including the launch control box, the fins uh, for this particular rocket and all the parts, uh, I will put up on the firstlayer.com and you'll be able to download those for free, for free as well as I will put them up on my Thingiverse page and I will give you links to that as well. So it's going to be an interesting uh, time doing these rockets or setting off these rockets. We have a private, we have some private land that we're going to be setting them off on. Uh, now we wanted to set them off on the 21st, which is coming up uh, this Sunday, but uh, it looks like the weather may give us a little bit of trouble uh, according to the 14 day forecast. So we're going to check closer to the weekend, see how, how well we're doing. Uh, however, the 28th is our next launch date. If we can't get launched on if the weather conditions aren't great for the 21st, um, we will be launching on the 28th. Uh, now, as far as model rocketry goes, I would go and check around the calgaryrocketry.org uh, on, on, uh, here in Calgary online. Go and check them out if you're in the area. Uh, there's also clubs both in Lethbridge. I believe there's one in Edmonton as well. Uh, they all have areas where they go and launch. 
Um, for these size rockets that you see here, we could launch them out at Airdrie, uh, but we would need permission from the club uh, to go out and do that. And I'm not a member of the club, but uh, we have been in contact with them, so we'll see what happens. If our our if we should fail to be able to launch on uh, the day that we want to launch on uh, private land. But with that said, let's figure, are these going to hold up? I hope so. Is this going to fly? I hope so. I, I don't know. Brian's also doing his own uh, 3D printed rockets. I think he's found some on Thingiverse that we're going to try out as well. We've got enough engines uh, or motors, whatever you want to call them. I know somebody corrected me last week on that. Uh, engines have moving parts, motors don't, or the other way around, something like that. But when you're dealing with model rocketry, uh, please think safety first. You are dealing with uh, black powder. Um, these essentially are little mini explosives. So be careful when you're using them. Uh, if you're under the age of, of 12, please have a parent with you. Uh, just don't go out and grab some of these, um, but have a parent with you. Make sure that this is a hobby that you do with your kids' parents. Um, and parents, get your, your, your parents involved in it. Kids, get your parents involved in it. Because I can tell you, this is going to teach you a great many things. Not only are we using 3D printing, but it's also going to teach you about aerodynamics. It's going to teach you uh, about physics. Um, things like that. So this is really a, a great hobby if you want to get into the STEM program or explore hobbies based around STEM, um, which I believe span, stands for science, technology, engineering, and mechanics. So uh, check out your local area, uh, your local model rocketry clubs. Most states, most provinces have them. Uh, they'll, they'll tell you where there are safe places to launch and uh, go out and have some fun make yourself some rockets to buy rockets they're not that expensive um, if you were going to buy this rocket i think this one comes in at less than twenty dollars if you just bought the rocket itself uh, this one here comes in at less than thirty dollars if you were to buy it on your own uh, so there are ways that you can get involved you can buy a kit for around 45 to 50 dollars which comes with a rocket a launcher and a launch pad Get you everything that you need with the exception of the engines. I want to thank again uh, PM Hobbycraft for helping us out, getting us started uh, in model rocketry at my age. Uh, again, I did it when I was a kid, as you guys know from the last episode. And um, I really thought this might be a great way to promote uh, not only the hobby of model rocketry, but also incorporate 3D printing as a hobby. So until I see you guys next time, uh, please hit that like button if you liked what you saw today and you got some information out of it. Also subscribe if you're new to our channel and please hit that bell notification so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. Now, until I see you next time, which will be Saturday night at 7 when we take your questions on Ask for Help TFL Live, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Bye for now.